It's California Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today by Mike Subaru. And sir, I want to talk to you about a series of events that happened in Riverside specifically yes. with regard to ambulances. But I do think it has applicability kind of throughout the region and statewide. Yes. Talk to us about how ambulance contracts have been given out in Riverside as an example of many municipalities. Yes. Well, what's gone on in Riverside up until recently is that the current 911 provider that the county uh, sets in place for all the cities in, in the county of Riverside. Um, they currently also, um, besides being the 911 provider, they also do work as uh, non-emergency ambulance or what they call inter-facility transports. Is that standard where there's only one 911 ambulance provider countywide? Is that a standard type of situation? Actually not. It depends on the county. I, I know see. that Orange County has different regions that they put up for bid, okay. and then that is the one that is used in that region no matter what the cities are in that particular right. region. And then also, too, um, besides the, the 911 aspect, you also have this inter-facility transport that these same 911 right. pr providers will, will uh, basically, when they're not on 911 calls, will, will perform that service. So, and you have gurney vans. Which, and, which and is? And gurney vans are, are basically transport with, like, um, maybe they're in a wheelchair or they do need some type of a gurney movement because they're in a bed. Uh, maybe they can't get up as readily. They need to go to a doctor appointment or maybe some other higher-level service. But those gurney vans do not have red light and siren capability. The non-emergency transports or the inter-facility transports right. are equipped with red light and siren in case things go bad. So in Riverside, the city, you had contracted with the same entity that had the 911 responsibilities countywide. Yes. And they had an exclusive contract. Yes. And that's the rub. Yes. And, and, and for that non-emergency ambulance. The rest of the cities in Riverside County either did not regulate the non-emergency transports or they just, you know, charged a fee for a permit to operate in the city but they didn't really regulate them. In other words, all other cities in Riverside County currently are allowed to, uh, non-emergency transports or these IFTs as they call them, interstate right. transports, are allowed to operate and come and go as they please. And I have to but, tell except you, for Riverside right. at this time. I have to tell you, you know, I've been covering Riverside now for yes. all, you know, over half a decade. I've been covering debates between city council candidates and mayoral candidates. It is amazing what this issue has done to the city. I mean, it is on top of mind, not just of insiders, yes. but of folks on the street. Everyone knows about the ambulance issue. It is yes. crazy to me how, you know, an issue that seems so inside baseball has really kind of captured right. uh, the spirit of the city. Yeah, and it, it's, it's about business. It's about mm -hmm. regulating business. It's about, you know, uh, you know, taking care of an individual company. You know, I mean, that's how some people look at sure. this dynamic. They say the word monopoly. Right. Th there's a lot of uh, dynamic here that, you know, people weigh in on it and, and they see that, you know, there's some potential problem. And over the last several years, it seems like every city council, when new members come on, yes. have to face this issue. Do we continue to allow the company happens to be called AMR, an exclusive contract for non-emergency services? And Look, businesses, you know, they can be effective at influencing and no, no pejorative statements intended, but yes. they have lobbyists and AMR has been effective in, in really being smart in keeping that exclusivity to themselves. Yes, they have. For their sense. A at, at this point, and, and I think the public outcry, actually it's not so much the public, because the public isn't really going to be calling these folks. You know, if they have an issue, they're going to dial 911. Right. They're going to hit that 911 button, so to speak. But you're not going to, you know, be calling up and searching around necessarily right. for a non-emergency transport for, let's say, your uh, dialysis sure. patient or something. That but yet the public in Riverside seems to know about the issue. They That's do. what's so interesting to me is, like you said, you wouldn't realize it when you call 911, yet just you talk to folks on the street, yeah. it's on top of mind. So the question becomes, where does the city go from here? Because it, I could sense it, the issue was reaching a boiling point yes. for whatever reason. And part of it was because of the way the contract was written, there was a distinction between whether someone could come in or out of the city for non-emergency. Could you explain? Yeah, for the non-emergency, like for instance, let's say a uh, patient needs to come in from Corona into Riverside, let's say Kaiser, and this is where some of the issues started coming right. up with Kaiser uh, Hospital not right. happy with how this works out. And they can bring them in, but they can't originate in Riverside and go out right. because they're not allowed to be here, right. so they can't originate. So you can bring that patient in and then drop them off and then Kaiser would have to wait to transport them back right. for AMR, the current provider, to get done with 911 calls or whatever, and then eventually have the time to come and get that patient, and which there's the problem, is, is standing along the wall, so to speak, at the right. hospital waiting to be transported back. And let's do talk about the whole distinction between 911 emergencies yes. and those that are not. There was some concern that AMR's 
focus, and again, not criticizing AMR, I don't know right. much about the issue specifically, but it, it was hard to be responsible for both on an exclusive basis in the significant major city in this county. Well, and, and when you look at the, just the principal fact of what an AMR, or a, excuse me, what a 911 provider right. does, you push that 911 right. button, it gets dispatched out to you, they run out red light and siren to that incident, whatever that is, house, out on the freeway, a mm -hmm. crash, and, and then they respond to the hospital, generally code three as well, and right. stand around for a little bit till the patient's accepted, then they leave. Right. The non-emergency transports are basically going from one facility to another. In other words, let's say you're a um, heart attack, you right. assume you're having a heart attack patient, and the closest hospital is, let's say, Riverside Community. Sure. So AMR will take you to Riverside Community, code three, but you find out in reality, you've got a gallbladder problem right. that was mimicking. So what Kaiser would do if you're a Kaiser patient is they're gonna say, you know what, let's stabilize the patient, it's not critical, we're gonna move them back to our facility. They call up one of the non-emergency providers and they would come to community and take the patient back for a non-emergency type thing, surgery or whatever needs to be done, back to Kaiser. And the reason for the red light and siren on these ambulances right. is that just in case something goes bad in between, and could. you've got the ability to get right. there quicker. Okay. Very simple on that. So there is news. There is news on this issue, and I think it's it's interesting that the issue is finally kind of working itself yes. out. I know San Bernardino County has a similar type of situation. I'm sure other counties and cities as well. Yes. What's the news? Well, the news is is that the city council this past uh, recently, Tuesday recently, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, we have our meetings on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. They approved, uh, and, and there's just one small little approval left, but it's kind of ceremonial. Right. And they basically had a public hearing. It finally made it through about a three or four step process mm -hmm. to get to that point, and that was uh, care ambulance. Mm -hmm. And the ones following in behind are Americare, Mission, and uh, Calvary. They're the other three that have applied, and they're up next uh, meeting which would be uh, you know, so, beginning of the year for a their hearing. AMR will no longer be the exclusive provider for non-emergency ambulance transport. One more just cursory step for right. care, and, and that would be a fact for the non-emergency interfacility transport. For those of us that love following the machinations mm -hmm. of city government, county government, state government, what went, for those that wanted to see competition, yes. what went right? How did, why in this moment in time, I've been, like I said, covering this issue for yes. uh, almost a decade. Why now? Why did it finally happen? Uh, maybe a change on, you know, who's on the council, you know, some different members that are more. But wasn't uh, about 6-1? Actually, uh, one, uh, one member had to abstain, actually the mayor oh. and one member had to abstain okay. uh, with a conflict on something related okay. to, uh, you know, the, the so issue of approving. The vote in the I end? believe it ended up being a 5-1 to one vote. 5-1, to one. I mean, yes. that's. I mean, that, that, that's not just yes. one new member. I mean, that, that's a real win. Yes, so, it is. So what's your sense? Okay, so maybe some membership changes. What yes. else? And, and also, too, I think, uh, you know, our, our local newspaper has written a number of editorials oh, yes, on have. this, about six, maybe seven of them. Uh, public opinion, people writing in, right. people contacting their council member. Um, even like Kaiser and other uh, facilities right. uh, coming up and speaking before council and talking about what this is. And most of it has been education. Because when a lot of the things that I heard early on as a candidate mm -hmm. and as mm -hmm. a council member, mm -hmm. there was a lot, of, uh, a lot of fluff out there that certain things would happen. And when you right. really got down and boiled down to, okay, is this really going to happen? Is this really true? Is this really a fact right. here in this thing? You know, you, you, you kind of found out when you boiled it down that so it wasn't as bad as they thought. presume there will be three or four candidates that right. can be uh, taking non-emergency transports. What will happen? How will the 911 dispatcher decide? It goes to AMR, Cavalry, how will they decide? They don't, it doesn't go through the 911 system at all. So what this is, is contracts, let's say mm -hmm. Mission Ambulance I know has a contract with Kaiser. Right. Um, Kaiser will call them exclusively to deal with back and forth to their to their facilities, and if they they're unable to handle, to, yeah. then they'll call another one. They'll have a backup. I see. But see, none of these calls, these will be direct calls, and really the public doesn't call these non-emergency providers. Right. It's mostly uh, right, medical uh, right. facilities or, or health plans, things like that will arrange for the transportation. It really is a fascinating issue yes. and it's been really my treat to kind of follow it and see where it would end and it's amazing to me. It has finally come to an end. His yeah. name is Mike Subaru. He is a member of the Riverside City Council. I'm Brad Pomerantz, it's California Edition.